It never, because I made up my mind. This is it. I'm going to preach. I'm going to teach the word of God. Somebody say amen. Because every message I preach, that's my life. Because if it's not working for me, what I respect is work for somebody. Somebody say amen. This morning, I, I look at the pastor when he told me, hey, you preach on Wednesday night. And I say, okay. Because I go with you the battle a lot of people don't know except the pastor. Last week, my father-in-law passed away. Or my, uh, not my father-in-law, my stepdad passed away in California. I baptized him in Jesus' name in 2018. It's Assembly of God uh, preacher and a family arguing over who's going to do the service. And yesterday, my, my uh, aunt called me and said, you're going to preach his funeral. See, those are testimony. Because you're working for the Lord, God's going to go aid uh, a place uh, you never dream you're going to be. Somebody say amen. And I know there God is working. Somebody say amen. The two weeks, three weeks, I got bite by the spider underneath the house. My legs is growing, tie my pants. And I never give up to come to the house of God. I went to the doctor and said, fix me up. If you can't fix me up, Jesus understand because he's the doctor. Oh, and, and, and right now, I get up in the morning and say, God, if you're not going to heal my legs this morning, I'm going to be struggling to preach your word. Pastor, God heal my legs in the truck when I hit it down to work. Somebody say amen. It's not only that. Say, God, show me a sign. I'm going to preach this message to, the, to your people. And God, show me a sign. I, do, I make two sales today. Yep, you get some money. Somebody say amen. God, open up the door. Those are the things God is doing eh, when you are staying faithful to God. How many of you spending your time trying to wonder? Question what somebody doing. Well, let the pastor deal with that. But you need to be motivated. So today, not only that, Pastor, today, I hate to tell you, tears come in my eyes. When you told me I was struggling, because the 26th of May, this is the day I was marrying my wife. The 26th. And I thank God the pastor be sensitive to let me stand here. Now and be with you as a church, as a family, as the people of God. And I still be excited. The most exciting thing for me when the church time, exciting for me when I know I'm going to visit my son. I forget about everybody else, but I'm praying for that time. My boy is going to be there for me. He's going to hear my voice. He's going to sing it to him because that's what God is trying to do. So whatever's going on in your life tonight, you need to pull it out and remind God. You are God and you can take care of my situation and my problem. This is the time to let go and let God. Somebody say amen. Now I'm finished. I am so excited to be here. I want to turn your Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. Here's a good scripture. No man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other. Or is he who will hold to the one and despise the other? You cannot serve God and mammon. <laughs> or oh, somebody say amen. In the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6, I love this scripture. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, his sons of Jacob. I will not consume. You know what Jacob means? Israel. Somebody say amen. So Israel is a favor of God. He put his eyes on Israel. Somebody say amen. But when Israel resists God, guess where God put his eyes on? The church. Those kind of things that make me exciting. That's why I want to be a part of the church. Verse 11. I, and I will rebuke the devour for your sake, and it shall not destroy the fruits of your ground.
The challenge of the church today is not the world. The challenge of the church today is not your past. The challenge of the church today is not your family living for, not living for God. The challenge today, the church is not hungry enough to put themselves, the promised God, give it to them. You gotta be hungry. You gotta be hungry when you come to the Lord. You gotta be hungry when you know God is real. He is a real God. Ain't no doubt in my mind that God is working. Ain't no doubt in my mind God will perform a miracle, sign and wonder before the church. And this is a sad thing. I wonder, you can be seated. I'm sorry to keep you standing. But if you want to stand, that's up to you. The sad thing is, Pastor, because the world, this virus, the people in the, in the world, they're looking for an answer. But I'm going to tell you, the Lord spoke this to me a long time ago. When I serve him, the answer is in the church. It's not in a doctor. It's not in anybody out there in the world. The answer is in the church because the church have a promise. And the promise was spoken by, by Jesus to Apostle Peter and all the disciples, he said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And this is the part of the church. Whatever you lose, it shall be loose in heaven. Whatever you pine, so people, that is the part of the church we're supposed to do, the losing and pine. Not gossip, not jealousy, not trying to put somebody down. Get yourself into all that nonsense and answer the question. You are the answer for this world. I can feel it. I can feel people. You don't need to tell me. But I cannot do nothing about your spirit. The only thing I do, I love you, stand with you, and do the best I can to serve God. <laughs> Woo! Now my message. Remember the past. Forget the rest. Some of us, <laughs> we, we, we throw things to God so God can fix it for you. And God look at you and say, I already fixed it for you. You throw things, the pastor want, they want to fix it for you. Why we just let the pastor preach the word? Why is he spending all the time? Somebody call. What is going on? I hate to tell you this. It's time to grow up and get hungry. Just like my son, he know when he's ready to eat. And I have a bottle, it's waiting for him. But before I feed him, I pray for his food. I speak to him, I say, son, you are exposing in this world. And I'm going to try to help you what the world is. I'm trying to help you how to live for God. I want to help you to dedicate your life for him. Man, pastor, I hate to tell you this. It's time to remove the bottle and a pacifier and a time to have the move of God. There are some people depend on you every time you come to this house, but you cannot help them. If you still have a bottle in your mouth and a pacifier in your mouth, it's time to put it out and depend on God and let God move in your needs. I hate to throw that to you. But I'm going to speak to you. Remember the past and forget the rest. What does that mean, Brother Laulu? That means everybody's going to go through things in life when you're born in this earth. Everything is going to happen to your life. But don't make those things 
to be a mountain in your life. Take it easy and make it easy to God. Somebody say amen. Take it easy and make it easy to the pastor or whoever is in the church. You need to go to God and say, God, I hold you for your word. Your word tells us we, we walk by faith and not by sight. And your word say, for I am the Lord. I change not. For the son of Jacob are not consume. I'm here to tell you it's time for us to rise up and act like a church. Don't act like the world. Don't bring the world in the church. Bring, bring somebody that are hungry for the truth. God told me the other day when I was praying, there's some people here that count me out. There's some people here that count the pastor out. They'll count, they'll count people out. They try to do things for God. We need to lift that spirit out and get it in and say, God, whatever. The man of God, the pastor, wanted to do, want to stand with him. Or oh, somebody say amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. How are we going to build a church? Let's build a church of God with hungry for righteousness. Hungry for truth. Hungry for the message of God. Hungry for the word. Hungry to come to the church. No matter what take place, you come in the same place. Remember the past and forget the rest. I remember all these things today. And I knew in my heart it's going to hit me. But I cannot do nothing about it. Only thing I do is to remind God, this burden I take, I'm going to give it to you. I just want to walk with a humble heart and obey God. I hate to tell you, I'm going to confess to you. I'm preaching, but my stomach is hungry because I was uh, not eating all day because I was kind of like, where I'm going today? But I'm here to tell you, that's a part of the flesh. Somebody say amen. But if you want to see great revival, great move of God, it's starting in a church. It's starting in you. It's starting in your family. Wherever you're going, that's where revival started. The center is not looking for revival. The church is. Do you know what the center is looking for? They're looking for restoration. Restore them. Pull them out from the hand of Satan. Pull them out from the pit of hell so they can understand why the church is exciting every time they get together. So many times we need to have revival. But every time, every time God moves, it's revival in the church. Every time you're excited, it's revival. Every time God bless you, it's revival. Every time you have a testimony, it's revival. Every time uh, somebody prayed through, uh, it's revival. Somebody say amen. But I'm here to help you tonight. Uh, you got to move on uh, and be hungry for the Lord. Somebody say amen. You got. Turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor, man. This is good. And you know what is good about it? When you're not paying for it. <laughs> My mind was going to the, the hamburger. I cannot afford it. I'm going to buy it now because somebody blessed me. I'm not saying I'm doing that to you. But <laughs> when, when somebody bless you, you get excited. Somebody say amen. And how come the church now exercises the same thing? When somebody bless you, when your pastor bless you for the word, you should go to him and say, Pastor, thank you to preach it to me. Thank you to keep me straight. Thank you to keep me uh, lying out with the word. Why you not say, Pastor, thank you for the word? This man of God, sick, his knees went out, and he's still behind the pulpit. Even his voice. Oh, hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? 
Even his voice is, is out. He's still behind the pulpit. We want those kind of men dedicated for the Lord. The job cannot hold him down or anything. No, the world cannot hold me. I want to see somebody. I want to connect it with somebody. The world cannot hold them down. But they're going to rise up and believe the word of God is in me. The word of God is in the church. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. Listen. You serve God. Don't try to please man. Please God. Please God. Because when you please God, you're going to see yourself connected to what God wants to do. When you please God, you're going to understand the church order. But if you're not please God, you can be confused. And Apostle Paul said there is no confusion in the church. Somebody say amen. Philippians 3, 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehensions. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and which forth unto those things which are before. I remember when I lived in my truck. After I kick out from the place where I used to live, I live in my truck, but my faith never lost. Oh, the thing happened to me, it never occurred in my life. I just praise God. Get up in the morning and say, God, thank you. You give me another breath. Thank you. The strength of my body. But I know, God, you're going to meet me in the end. I remember when they introduced me to the pastor. He's standing with me hand in hand. He's standing there as a friend, as a man. Man of God, fight the battle with me. But I'm here to tell you, church, you might be not understand somebody's battle, but you need to reach out and help us. Somebody say amen. You need to put ourselves in a place to understand what God is doing. If you want God to move in your life, you need to reach out and help somebody. enemy try to destroy me. The enemy try to do everything to hold me down. But I make the vow with God when I give up my football career. 1989. Say, God, if you raise the dead, I'm going to serve you that day. You kept it. Remind the devil that vow you make with God. My anointing, my calling, the God I have is not coming from somebody else. It's coming from my life dedicated. No matter what takes place, I'm going to stand. No matter what storm coming, I'm going to stand. Somebody say amen. If you ever fought against somebody in the same part, you need to deal with it. Before... The enemy makes somebody in the house of God like Judas. Pastor, I'm praying. The book of Acts, move of God. You know, Ananias and Sapphire, Ananias and Sapphire, they are favor of God. But when they lie in the Holy Ghost, because they think. They're gonna, uh, they're gonna lie to God, and God's not gonna do nothing. And I believe it's gonna happen in the church. That's why the church need to rise up and pray up before that revival coming in the church and the move of God. Somebody say, "Man, it's not matter what you have. It's not matter what going on in your life. What is it matter? You stand and pray, God, and stand and support the church and back the man of God. I'm here to do everything I can to move this church forward." If you have the Holy Ghost, nobody can tell you. You already have the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is a liberty. God is so merciful. 
Somebody say amen. I watched some people coming in here, feel like it. They, they try to say, God, help me. But they never get up and say, God, I made up my mind. I dedicate my life to you. I want to serve you no matter what take place. Somebody say amen. In the book of Psalm chapter 54, verse 1. Save me. Is that your cry every day? Save me, God. Oh, God, by thy name. And judge me by thy strength. Uh, Pastor, I cannot wait for that sun to come up because I'm ready. 3.30, I get my knee praying and asking God to bless this day. If it's Wednesday, God bless Wednesday. Before I walk out to the house, uh, give me your strength uh, or give me your protecting. Uh, seal me with blood. Uh, have mercy over me. Uh, let your angel go with me. Uh, send a raven, God, uh, wherever I go. Uh, I'm here to try to help some of you. Uh, you need to have a dedicated life. Uh, that's why I never turn my fire up. Uh, because before I come to church, uh, I already fired up. Uh, I got to fire it up in the morning. I got to fire it up in the night. I got to fire it up. When I come into church, somebody say amen. And I'm here to encourage you. Oh, church, this is our time. Oh, God, give ears to the word of my mouth. What do you need? You need to have a willing heart. Because he want to come and dwell in you. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you. You're not going to hold me down, flesh. Devil, you're not going to mess up my day. I'm moving forward to do what is right. God is good. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. If you chose to be for God, take all away. Just like you that's your paycheck. Take it there. Take it to the bank. Put it in there. That's how you're supposed to be living for God. Somebody say, man. Living for God is the most exciting thing. I ever experienced, I ever found in my life, no matter what trial, the challenge come in my life, I still stand in and remind God I'm an overcomer. You know why I'm overcomer? Because I have a testimony is burning inside of me. I have the word of God. It's burning inside of me. But when I make my way down the house of God, I have a man of God to stand here and pack up the word when he speak. That's why I get on my phone. I write down everything he's trying to understand when he preach because I need it. Somebody say amen. Might be I leave the house of God and I need God. I need the word of God. Somebody say amen. So I'm here to tell you, church, this is our time to rise up and hungry for the Lord. Forget the part of virus forget about the world but we need to put our focus in the church and have service have revival have the move of god let the world see the church is alive it's not dead and you know something really funny When we stand behind this pulpit to preach, it's not for them they're not here. It's for you they are here. Like myself, pastor, brother Bruce, the elder, whoever, they'll bring the message for you they are here. Because you are hungry. And when you're hungry for the word that preached to you, you're going to tell somebody. I'm not a woman that thanks God, but you encourage me. Every time I come in that door, you are here with the paper. Fixing the house. Looking for somebody 
they go with you shopping, but they are here faithfulness. Don't look at somebody, they just gossip and they try to run you down and try to make a statement it's never true. For somebody say amen. But look at somebody. This this sister here, they fixing to have the baby. They passed about seven months or uh, seven days. Uh, but God using her to make the church to be encouraged, make the church to be uplifted. He is here. She's here. She's here. It's easy for her to stay home. But she's here. We all stand. Young people, if you keep that faithfulness, keep coming to the house of God, even if you never understand me when I preach or everything going on, you will understand when you turn 50. Just keep it plowed. Keep hungry. Keep the right spirit with God. And drive it forward. God spoke to me, Pastor, this morning. This church is going to be exploded with the anointing they never felt before. We want to see, I say, God, we want to see people when they walk in, in that door. They got healed. They got delivered. And they run to the altar and say, God, forgive me. God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. God, touch my family. I'm here to tell you. I'm on the fourth generation. But I'm the first generation in the apostolic movement. And all those fourth generation, I had their funeral and preached the word in front of the preacher. I'm here to tell you, if you just hold on, God's going to make the way and make you and open the door for you. You, if you are stay faithful, I don't want you come to the altar, but I want you to keep your faith. And I know the pastor is gonna finish up. God so told me there's a fresh anointing coming. I want you to make a way and walk around this book and claim that fresh anointing. And if you have a family in your mind, they need to be. Save, born again this message. You are the one, the key. If they need a miracle, you are the key tonight. I want you just walking around, and when you finish, you come over here in front of here and say, God, I'm marching into the place. I know the anointing is gonna fall. I'm not saying the anointing now, the anointing is in this house, the anointing is in this place. Make your way. And let God, oh, katala la la ba shita la ba shanda, Hallelujah, Jesus.
forever the King in Rome, glory and splendor, holy, holy Lord. The veil is torn and the doors fling wide, I see glory, yes, I run inside the throne room. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. I am so thankful that I got to share the presence of the Lord with y'all tonight. Thankful that God moved on a man that's... Brother Lulu's going through a lot, folks. But you know... There's an old saying, I never knew I, I, I get it at this degree, the sheep closest to the shepherd is the safest. I've always said that, I'm, I'm always, and I'm thankful for Paul Price and other ministers that I've had in my life, and I have found that the sheep to the close, the, the closest to the shepherd is the safest. It doesn't mean you're not going to have attacks, it doesn't mean things aren't going to happen. It just means you are in close proximity to good counsel. That's right, amen. Amen. That the shepherd will stand there and say, no, don't run. Hello? We stand and fight. We were given armor for the front, not the back. That's right, amen. Tell you, that's right. And nobody can, nobody in their right mind in armor would lay in a lounge chair. Hello? We're, we're called to the battle. That's right. I don't know about you, but I... I want to be in this thing. I want to be in this thing. I don't want to be caught up in the things of the world. I have to live in it, but I don't want to be of it. Amen. Brother Ulu, again, thank you for bearing your heart. I needed that tonight. You, can, you, you have my permission. You don't have to mention me during it. I always like to be a listener and a saint now and then too and I may have to be pastor but I'm not going to pastor like everybody pastors I'm not walking around here like I'm some lord or some boss or someone that's in charge of nothing I, I tell you what I'm in charge of getting my act right with Jesus Come on, pastor. Amen. Amen. and I love the fact that anybody that wants an opportunity 
to do something for God. The door's open here. Yes. Win somebody, love somebody. You know what? I, 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 I have to, let's go find someone that's hungry. Amen. Amen. They ain't nothing better than cooking food for hungry people. And, and every mom in the house said, amen. You don't want to have to put leftovers in the fridge. They eat it all up. Right. Amen. I believe the Lord is looking for hungry folks. Come hungry and stay hungry, church. There's a world out there. He's anointing us for a last day revival. Anybody want to be a part of that? Amen. 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 Let's go read somebody. Amen. Let's lay aside every weight and the sin. Amen. Let's grab our family and say, let's go make a difference for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Thank you for the man of God and the word of God tonight. Send us forth as laborers into the harvest. And we don't come back empty-handed this Sunday, but somebody's going to be in the house of God because we've been in the harvest field. And everybody say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. God, empower you and bless you, and we will see you in the next one. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.